Hey, welcome to this tutorial on how to create a cycle plot in Excel. I am John Schwabish from PolicyViz. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, my good friend Kennedy Elliott from National Geographic uh, did a tutorial on the cycle plot in her entry in the One Chart at a Time video series, which you can also see uh, elsewhere on my YouTube channel. And in it, she showed this example at the top here that she created a few years ago when she was working at the Washington Post that shows the monthly levels of ice um, in around the globe uh, for each of these uh, different months from 1979 to 2015. And so you can see the basic characteristics of the cycle plot here. For each month, we have each of these different years and these little lines going across these months. And so it allows you to see both the changes across the months, uh, across the months for each of the years, and also what happens over the course of the year in, in general. And so I was having a little bit of a back and forth discussion with some people on Twitter and Michael Brown tweeted out that he wanted to learn how to figure out this chart type in Excel. And I thought I had a, a template somewhere, but I had to rebuild it. So I went out and actually found that monthly sea ice uh, average extent data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And as you can see here on the right, this is the graph we're going to create in Excel. And it turns out that this is actually not a very difficult chart to make in Excel. I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a little bit of a hack to get these labels here on the x-axis exactly where I want them. And there might be a different way to do that. So if you have any thoughts, please do let me know. So I'm gonna go over here to this cycle plot tab and um, I'll link below to this Excel file. You can grab this and download it and, and use it as you like. So here in columns B to F, I have the raw data. So this is the data that comes from um, the snow and ice data center. And you can see that we have the year, we have the month, um, we have the data type, the hemisphere represents here is the Northern hemisphere and then the sea ice extent, which is um, uh, in millions of square kilometers. Now I'm also gonna create a little date uh, variable here because I'm going to use a, a lookup function to actually create my my data set for the chart. So what I've done here is simply just combined the year and the month with a little space. So you can see that here at the very top. If you just have the cell C3 and then an ampersand and then I'm going to put a, a space here just separated by apostrophes or quotation marks and then another ampersand you can see that I get that uh, that combined date together. I could use a date format but, but this works uh, fine for what I need to do. Um, and you can see here, I also have comments and all these uh, header cells here. So you can see exactly how I'm gonna do this um, if you don't wanna watch this entire video. Okay, so over here on starting in column I, I'm gonna have the data that I'm gonna use for the chart. And so what I've done is I've set up the data to go from 1979 all the way down to 2020. So that's the data that I have um, from the uh, data center. And then I'm gonna add three more years. So 2021, 22, and 23, that's ultimately gonna be the spacing. You can see here in the chart, the little white space between the, the different months here. I'm gonna use this as my spacing. And so that's really the key to this chart is it's gonna be uh, a, just a line chart, but I wanna add some spacing between each of the months. And to do that, I'm just gonna use some NAs here so that what Excel is gonna do is it's going to ignore the NA. So I'll show that you how that works in just a second. But basically I started this chart by just creating my year and month data series. So I have 1979, I added one all the way down so I get to 2023. And then here, starting in the second month, it's just gonna reference back to cell I3 and then I just copy uh, all the way down. And similarly, right next to it, I have the month one, um, this is just copying down. You see it's just month, first month. And then down here where I restart for February, I'm just gonna put uh, reference back up to J3 and add one. So you can see all I have to do is start here and I just get this all the way down so that I have 12 months for all these years with 2021, 20, 22, and 23 for each of the months. Okay, in cell K, I use a similar approach to combine these together so that I have the month, space, and then the year. And now what I need to do is pull the extent data over from the raw data cells uh, over to my data where I'm gonna actually make the chart. So I'm gonna use a simple VLOOKUP and it looks a little complicated here if you look at my formula. It looks a little complicated, but actually, it's actually pretty simple. I've embedded it in an if statement because I noticed in the raw data, there were a few months here and there where they actually didn't have any data, so there was a zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, the core VLOOKUP is gonna say, look up this date text string that I've created in my raw data table. So it's gonna look up in this cell, one comma 1979, it's gonna go over here and one comma 1979, it's gonna look in the sixth column, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
and it's going to put that value in column L. Um, the if statement says if that thing exists, so if it's not equal to zero, put the value from the raw data. And if it is um, uh, equal to zero, or if it doesn't exist, put an NA, okay? So when I copy and paste this down, I get all my values for each of the Januarys for each of these years. And then when I get to these missing years because they don't exist, Excel gives me this hashtag NA. And this is, again, the key part of making this graph is that hashtag NA is going to be ignored by Excel. So that's how I know when I create this graph, I'm gonna get 15.41, 14.86, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 13.65, and then it's just gonna ignore, 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 it'll just be a space, and then it'll start again in 16.18 for February of 1979. So that's the extent data, and that, when we create the graph, you're gonna see that's gonna be the green lines over here. So you can see I have the green line, and then there's a little gap here. Um, and if I change this just real quickly, if I hard code it a zero, you can see that I get these three zeros here. So that's why I wanna do the NA rather than the zero. Okay, so what about the average? Because I also want to add a little average here for each of these months. So you can sort of see, maybe more easily see the change, the average change uh, from one month to the next. So I'm going to create a little average. And what I'm going to do here is just, you know, what I want again is I want to have the average for all the years except for my spacer years for, 19, for 2021, 22, and 23. So I'm going to say if I3, if the year in my graphing data here is less than or equal to 2020. Give me this average, and I'll cover that in just one second. And if not, give me an NA. So again, it's gonna give me an NA in those spacer years. And the average if says, give me an average. And so the average if says, um, what do, what am I going to, um, what am I comparing to? So columns C, basically column C here references the month, as you can see in the red. J3 is the month that I'm looking in. And then the F column is the thing that I'm averaging. So what my, this formula is gonna do here is it says, okay, let's look for the first month in this data in column C. And when it's equal to one, we're gonna take the average of the extent data. And so for February, uh, for, for January, for all these years, the average is 14.2. And when I get down to 2021, 22 and 23, because it's in that if statement, it's just going to uh, give me an NA instead of a value. And again, that's going to give you this blue line that's going to stop right at that white gap. Okay, so that's going to give us the lines, the green line and the blue line here. Now I'm going to create this gray band behind it. Now I don't really need the gray band. The gray band is really just to copy what Kennedy did uh, back in her original graphic here, which I think is just a really nice approach. Um, you can really see this, this nice, uh, this nice, uh, technique here. I'm not going to do the banding the way she did. I, I do the average, um, but we could do the banding too. This is a, a slightly different approach, but I'm just going to do uh, that, that gray banding behind it. So what I've done here, sort of similar thing. If the year in my graph data is less than or equal to 2020, give me the number 20. And if it's not, give me zero. Okay. And we're going to plot that originally as a line chart, and then we're going to change it to a column chart. So what you see here in this graph, these are all bars because this is just a column chart. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add the, the month labels here along the x-axis. And I tried a bunch of different ways to get this to work and I was getting some weird alignment of the text. So I decided to do it kind of a different way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot another line series on this chart, another line chart, and I'm going to do something similar. I'm just going to place the label where I want it. And so if the year in my chart data is equal to 2000, give me the number zero. And if it's not 2000, give me an NA. And so I'm gonna show that to you in a second, and then I'll show you what this column P means. Okay, so very simply, I'm gonna take columns L, M, N, and O, and I'm gonna select all of the data, and I'm gonna insert a line chart. So I'm gonna go up here, select line chart. You can see I'm on a Mac, but this is gonna work the same way for Macs and PCs, uh, except for one small difference. So I'm gonna take this chart. Personally, I just like to have my charts up at the top of my spreadsheet. So I'm gonna bring that up here. And you can see that we have the line for the average, the green line for the actual values, and then we've got this blue line. This is equal to the 20s, 2020, 20, 20, and it drops down to zero, comes back up, 2020, 20, 20, drops back down to zero, comes back up. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select the blue line, so the bar series, and I'm gonna to go to my chart design tab, and I'm gonna change the chart type to a column chart. And you can see here where we're getting close. Now. 
just to note that that's how the approach works on a Mac. If you're on a PC, you'll just go into the change chart type menu and you'll just use the drop downs under the combo. And this is just a, a regular screenshot, not of this particular graph, but instead of selecting the series and going to change chart type, you'll just go to change chart type and use the drop down menus here. Okay, so now I have my bars. So now we need to make a couple of changes. So I'm gonna right click and say format my data series and I'll change the gap width to zero. So I want these bars to all be Basically, you know, I don't want any gap between them except where I've specified the gap by, by having this as zero, right? The, these values here where this white space is, that's the zero, right down here in 2021, 22, 23. So I'm gonna change that color. I'll make it like a, 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 a light gray, you know, that lightest gray works. I mean that, you know, I could even go lighter if I wanted, um, but you can make whatever gray you like there, whatever color you want. And notice that the, the Y axis here goes to 25. So Excel by default won't let you go to the maximum of the Y axis. So I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make that a 20. So I just selected my Y axis and right clicked and got that up there. Okay, and now um, let's also change the increments on that Y axis. So I'm gonna make that a five the way Kennedy did it instead of a two. And so now I'm there. And so now what I need to do is figure out this, this Y axis. And I tried a bunch of different ways by using some number formats and some other things and it couldn't quite get it to work. So I have this, this slight workaround. And so what I'm gonna do, I have a, 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 um, a line chart in here and the value is zero and it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to use my format tab to go into this drop down over here on the left side. This is a, a, a drop down I don't think a lot of people know about. If you select your chart and go to format on the left side is this drop down menu and has everything in your chart. So I'm going to grab the value series. And so I'm going to just going to change this so you can see it real quickly to make this a line chart with markers. And so you can see I have these markers here. And again, Excel is ignoring all of my NAs and it's just plotting the zeros. So that's why I'm going to use this because what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the existing X axis labels. And now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to add data labels to this line chart, right? So this is just a line, but there's no line actually being shown because there's all these NAs. So Excel just ignores the NAs and it plots just the points. So now I've added data labels and here's another great um, uh, addition to Excel, especially for the Mac. This has existed in the uh, version for PCs for a while, but what I can do for my data labels is I can select value from cells. You can see here on the right side under my label options. So instead of using the name of the series, which is value or the name of the category, which is in this case, just gonna be the row number or the value itself, I'm gonna use the value from cells. And that's where this column P is gonna come in. So let me just show you how this works first. So I'm gonna select the value from cells and now I'm gonna select, select uh, column P all the way down here, scroll down to the bottom and I'll hit okay, I'll go back up. And obviously I don't need the value, so I will turn that off and I'll put this below and I'll delete the existing legend. I don't really need that. And now I can grab this chart right over here on the edge so that I can give these labels a little more space. Again, you can play around with your own spacing. And I'm gonna grab these markers and I'm gonna turn these markers off. I don't need them for this line chart. A lot of ways to do this. I'll just do the easy way, turn the markers off. Okay, so how do these labels work? Well, again, I'm gonna match up where the zeros are with the label. And so I'm gonna use a little bit of a trick here to convert the number to a month. Okay, so I'm just gonna uh, highlight right here in this January. So this says, Again, I want the label to be in the year 2000. I could set this up to be wherever I wanted. I want it to be in the middle of these each of these bands. So if the year's 2000, I'm gonna make the text of uh, J24, which is the month value. Um, I set that in a, um, a month format of, of quote MMM, so three letters for each month. And if it's not 2000, give me an NA. So this text function converts the number uh, to that three letter code. So I get January here, and if I scroll down, again, it's still zero, I get February here, I scroll down, I get March. Now, let's go back real quickly, and let's go back to Kennedy's version, 
Um, you can see it's still, it's, it's, it is centered here. She did have it centered, but let's just say for whatever reason, you wanted to have it at the end of this point, at the end of each bar. So let's say you wanted to have it in 2020. Well, that's a simple change. You could just make this 2020 at the top. And I'm going to just click here and I'm going to change this zero value also to 2020. And you can see that they've moved over. Right, so uh, that 2000 is just like it's in the middle of this series between 1979 and 2020. But I could put it wherever I wanted. But let me undo that um, because I like having it actually in the middle. I think it looks better that way. And so then it's just a matter of putting in the um, in the source note at the bottom. I just use a text box to do that. Um, add the chart title um, and format it however you like. And then play around with any of these colors that you want. Um, again, I'm using a light gray for the background. Um, I can change any of these other colors. It's just a line chart. Um, it might warn you for some complex formatting. I find that it never is complex, um, but you can go in and change any of this sort of thing. So again, it's just a line chart. You have three uh, lines. You have the extent line, which is the actual data. So that's that uh, squiggly looking uh, pink line. You have the average, which now is a uh, straight solid blue line. You have the line at the bottom of the chart along the x-axis that we'll use to plot the month labels. And then we have this bar chart in column N, which is the background bars, which again is not absolutely necessary, but you know, is not, I thought a, a, nice, uh, a nice way that Kennedy did it. And at the end of the day, really the key in making this cycle plot is really just to say, or to recognize that you wanna add a little gap between each of these lines. And an easy way to do that in Excel is to have an NA in your data series because Excel will ignore the NAs. And so by adding them right in here, just by having these spacer uh, years, um, you're all set. So you can see here, pulling in the, the, the raw data using a VLOOKUP, then doing a little bit, uh, some simple if statements, you can really make a nice, um, a really nice cycle plot in Excel without a, a ton of effort. So uh, please go over to the website. Uh, the blog post will be linked below where you can grab this Excel file and you can use it for your own cycle plots. And I hope you will use it and I hope you'll enjoy it. And thanks so much for listening.